Hello and welcome. I'm Nafe42 and in this video I'm just going to show you how to install sudo, docker and portainer to the server that we set up last time. So as you can see I'm already on the Debian server here and what you want to do is just load it up from the VirtualBox Manager. So if you have the VirtualBox Manager here just double click on Debian test or whatever you set it to last time when we set that up and you'll get this run up, this setup. Log into your root account if you can, and what we need to do is set up nano, uh, sudo, sorry, for your um, for your personal account. So in order to do that, you need to go sudo. Uh, no, not sudo. <laughs> it's not there yet. App to get install sudo. Now what this will do is it will install sudo for you. I this is actually my take two. Uh, accidentally, I forgot to turn the microphone on last time. So um, <laughs> rookie error. Uh, I've already installed sudo. You want to um, just quickly add your user to the group for sudo. So if you go user mod dash a dash d uh, sudo and then your username uh, and that will add your user to the sudo group. Press enter. Now that's done. You can do that. You can test this out by going groups and then your name and you can see in here you have sudo among the list of groups that you're part of. And that's good. So now we have that group as part of us. What we want to do is we want to go into um, Putty again, P-U-T-T-Y, and we'll log it into the server. If you've forgotten what the IP address of the server is, you can type in on here, IP ADDR, enter, and it will show you your internal IP address under INET. I can't point to it, uh, but it's the second INET down here. Where for me it says 10.42.42.150. Um, open. Now what that does is it sets it up for you, as you can see here. Ah, uh, a bit small actually. Let me just let me just do that again. Come on, party. So I did set it up as Debian test docker so what you can do is if you type it in there you can type in something here and then click save and then it will save it in this little list here so for me i want to change the size of things to a little bit bigger <laughs> so that you can actually see it on the camera because otherwise it might be a bit small change oh, we we'll just change the rows with that uh session there we go demon test docker save that open that oh okay fine 10 42 42 150 let's try this again there we go it's a bit bigger um so we'll just full screen this so now what we want to do is run login as a 42 you can't or your username where you set up as you can't log in as root it will not allow you so if you type in root with the root password it will say access denied um, and that's actually a really bad thing for me to have done because now I need to restart this again <laughs> uh, or control C there we go there we go excellent party <laughs> uh, uh, so I do 10 40, 40, 50 oh, bloody hell. all right so yeah we'll change this to 20 again uh, yep, yep 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 cool 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 next so now you're logging in as the account that you set up last time you want to type in the password for that account and now you're logged into it so now what you can do just to uh, move on to the next part what we want to do is we want to install um, docker so uh, it's probably been a little while since we last used this so we'll do sudo apt get install no sorry apt get update uh, and then type in the password and as you can see, that went through perfectly fine for us. What it does is it just updated all the stuff, uh, updated where it finds all of the um, the packages, essentially. Um, and that's good. So now you want to just do sudo apt get install at transport HTTPS CA certificates curl. these things 
uh, and then it will just install these. These are packages that can be useful for uh, Docker, so they're good to have, nice to know. We could try installing Docker. Okay, so there's a couple of things we need to do differently here. I was, I was following an old <laughs> install thing, so we want to do, uh, there's a couple of things that I'm just going to list actually below. Uh, so the ones that I previously did, I will scratch, I will remove them from the cut, uh, and I'll start again from here. So these ones you just want to paste in, I'm just going to put them into the uh, comments below. Uh, and hopefully you can just copy and paste them straight in as well. So we'll paste these things in and that's good. So now what we want to do is we want to do um, this one to set up the repository. Um, so that should be good actually now to uh, for us to actually find it, sudo apt get update. So now it's done the update and it actually did like it this time, which is nice. So now we can do sudo apt get install docker ce docker ce cli containerd.io docker build x plugin. and docker, oh, docker compose plugin, enter. Now what this does is it installs all those packages. We'll go yes. And as you can see, it's now doing what it needs to do to install and download these packages. Um, it's good that that is actually going ahead now. It, uh, I've, I'm following the official resource for this now, so this should be a bit more straightforward hopefully um so yeah I, I don't think this should take too long it has as you can see here put something in the services so system d which is nice uh setting up creating system d so yeah it created several different containers uh several different services that can be run in the computer hopefully they are run and we'll find out if they are by typing docker and it is running so that's good so we can do docker uh well pf no pf uh, was it pf oh my god i've, I've actually just completely forgotten <laughs> the, the command to fight PS. Oh god. Docker P PS. It's not that. It's PS dash A. Permission denied when trying to connect to a Docker containment. Oh. Let's sudo it then. Yes. Cool. So when we go in as sudo, we do have the full permissions that we require in order to see that there are no containers running right now so uh, just to make sure and as it does say the container is docker is uh, docker.soc you can go um, system d uh, d system d um, status docker System CTL, not System D. On about. Okay, there we go. So, uh, so yeah, not System D, Docker. You use System S CTL status Docker. It says active running, and as you can see here, that's good. It is enabled, which means they should boot with startup, which is good. Um, so yeah, that's nice. So now that that is running, what we can do is we can move on to part three of this uh, tutorial, which is to install Portainer. Now, Portana is something which is um, essentially a GUI for this. So you don't have to go in and type in stuff in command line. You can just use this on a website for a browser to find the uh, containers and stuff that you have to create, uh, I think they call it stacks. Was it stacks? 
um, which allow you to use Docker Compose in order to create different web servers for yourself. So uh, what this does is it allows you to copy and paste lines of code, essentially, um, a couple of lines of code to create multiple servers of the same thing, be it a web server or a MySQL server or a uh, Docker <laughs> uh, a Portainer server or the, all these different things uh, and create new servers with them or yeah and that makes it very useful for deploying if you have multiple different sites or uh, also makes it very useful if you are looking for a very easy way to deploy a server that you don't know too much about if you know a bit about docker you can just copy and paste someone else's um docker compose file put it into yours and as long as it's up uh, using volumes essentially it should automatically just run hopefully that's the that is the hope what we want to do is we want to create uh the volume that i just said about so what we'll do is we'll go docker volume create portainer underscore data now it's going to ask me for yeah it's, it is so if you forget to put sudo at the start of a of a thing you can type sudo exclamation mark exclamation mark sudo space exclamation mark, exclamation mark people call it sudo bang bang enter and then it will do what you just told it to do so now that that portainer data has been created now what you want to do is you want to go docker run tac d tac p for ports 9000 9000 so what that does is it translates port 9000 on the outside to the port 9000 on the inside we go double dash um name equals portainer obviously uh return re uh, restart equals unless stopped minus v now this is very important to get this right var run docker dot sock will connect with var run docker dot sock sock dash v portainer underscore data colon dash data portainer slash portainer dash ce so as you can see here you have run dp p mean and port 9000 will translate to 9000 outside of the of the container name is portainer so that's the name of the container for ease of use restart equals unless stopped so it, it will restart until you tell it not to um which means that if it fails it will restart itself um v so v is actually a mapping uh for a volume or similar um what that does in this one is it connects your docker.sock so it will run your your docker service or socket i guess in this in this case will run inside of portainer as well so it takes the outside and puts it inside of itself that's what containers really do um and that's why they're so good so tac v down here portainer underscore data is the uh volume that we just created uh and then you have the colon which means that it translates that to data forward slash data so on inside that system if you go to forward slash data it will have whatever is in portainer underscore data and then finally portainer forward slash portainer dash ce is the docker um is the the program that it will run or essentially the the actual container we'll press enter here <laughs> okay so do sudo bang bang because i forgot to put sudo at the start obviously unable to find image locally so what it does is it looks locally to try and find uh portainer slash portainer ce colon latest which is the one they always try and look for uh, if you don't specify a version number or an operating system which is what usually comes after this and then it will do what it's doing now which is find it on a different website most likely docker hub or hub.docker.com it will pull it off of there and then it will set it up 
So as you can see, it's done the digest in it. And this is all the, the the special characters and stuff to say. Test this against the official the official image and see if it's the correct version that we've done. And now what you can do is you can go to, hopefully, yeah, hopefully you can go to ten forty two forty two one fifty, port nine thousand, enter, and we have Portana here. And that worked. <laughs> there we go. So now we can go admin password. We've got a random password here. Create user. Click. And now, as you can see, we've created, uh, we've started the setup for Portana through the website. So what this does is now it means that we don't really need to do anything with that, that side of the server in order to set up web servers and things like this. So we want to just... Um, We'll just get started, I guess. So local is up, and as you can see here, local var run docker dot suck. So this is the local one which is running on that machine anyway. So that is that is actually correct. And as you can see here, there's one image. One image is the portainer. So <laughs> it is inside of itself right now. You can see portainer is running. And if you want to go into that portainer, you've got logs here, which will show you here exactly what's happening with it. Uh, and if there's any issues or if there was any issues with uh, the boot or with that system or you can click this one to go and boot into that machine yeah usually it works it doesn't want to work this time maybe it's maybe that's too deep for it to be able to do um but normally that's fine yeah and, and that will work uh but portainer itself does uh, a lot of really wonderful things and lots of really cool things uh, like setting up new ip addresses internally for different machines different 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 networks as you can see under here networks you've got bridge host and none none obviously will have no network affiliation whatsoever it won't be able to connect to the internet and all this kind of stuff host will have the access that the host does have so it will be based off of the system itself and then bridge will have a bridge um to other networks essentially I mean, it's all kind of self-explanatory, really, when it comes to that. But when you go to stacks, this is where you want to go for a container uh, for compose. I'm not going to get that into that this time because we will save that for next time. I think this tutorial has been going for long enough. Um, so hopefully you learned something today. And hopefully if you wanted to get your container up and running, then you can do that the way that I've just shown you. Um, if you have any suggestions for things that you want me to show you next time, let me know. And I will get on to that um, if there's anything that you would like me to go over from this. Leave a comment in the section below and I will get back to you on as soon as possible. But that's it for me for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.